Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Talmadge, and along with Pastor Nanette Christofferson, each week we try to provide a brief introduction to two of the assigned Bible readings. In this video, you're going to take a look at the Old Testament first lesson for Sunday, September 1st, 2024. It's out of the uh, uh, book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verses 1 to 2, and verses 6 to 9. Just a little bit of background on Deuteronomy. Uh, probably dates around 1260 BCE, so uh, 3,200 years ago, uh, or not 3,200 years ago, uh, but uh, 2,800 years ago. Uh, people are encamped in the territory of Moab, preparing to cross the Jordan into the Promised Land. So I have a little map here for you. The words are attributed to Moses, but uh, both uh, Jewish and other biblical scholars believe there have been many edits to this book um, at different time periods. Uh, but um, the meaning of the word Deuteronomy, you can break it up. You can see deuce is in there, do twice. And nomos is the Greek word for law. So it's the second giving of the law, and that would be the second giving of the Ten Commandments. It's a restatement and reaffirmation of the Sinai Covenant before the people of God cross the Jordan River into the Promised Land. Here's an outline for you, historical prologue. Uh, then we are at the beginning. Our lesson is in the basic stipulations of, of what this covenant between God and God's people is going to be like and, and the call for obedience of listening, paying attention. Uh, then you have detailed stipulations. Uh, you have a, a further, meant, a further clause about the document. Then you have a list of blessings, curses, a recapitulation of everything. And then 31 to 34, you get Moses' last words. Uh, the historical setting, again, 13th century, uh, before Common Era, uh, Egypt is in decline. The Philistines are rising. They're along the coast of the Mediterranean. Iron working creates new technology, and as humans are gifted at, uh, they are being used to uh, build uh, better and stronger weapons uh, to take care of uh, protecting and destroying. City-states are giving way to national states like Edom and Moab, so more than just like a village or a town, now you have multiple towns and villages under the reign of one king. Ancient Near East Covenants, uh, these are, the, this is what the book is about. It's about a covenant that God makes with the people of God, often called the Mosaic Covenant. You have a preamble. If you look at other cultures, they also had covenants. So we see the Hebrew Covenant is, uh, is or the Jewish Covenants are parallel to what was happening in their culture around them. You have a preamble, it names the author. There's a historical prologue describing the relations between the parties. There's a stipulation explaining mutual responsibilities. Then you have the document uh, describing the treaty document and arranging for somebody to read it at regular intervals. Uh, there are a list of gods who are witnesses to this treaty. There are curses and blessings uh, threatening those who uh, uh, don't obey and blessing those who remain faithful. You see these elements with, with a few little uh, nuances. The Promised Land. You might remember way back in Genesis, the first book of the Torah, the first book uh, attributed to Moses. Uh, it's, uh, it's in Genesis 12, we get the beginning of where we can date and time uh, a person and a place. Abraham and Sarah, uh, Genesis 12, God made a promise to make his descendants into a great nation to give the land of Cana as an everlasting possession in Genesis 17, to enter into a special relationship, to be their God of all the people in the world, God has chosen the tribes or descendants of Abraham to have this special relationship and to bring blessing to all the peoples of the earth through this unique relationship that God has chosen with the descendants of Abraham. The promised land, this, the land is a huge huge concept in the Old Testament and to the Jewish people. Uh, thus, we're living in a time where right now we have war going on in the Middle East, and it's always, always, always about the land. In the Old Testament, four major themes develop out of this original covenant. 
the land belongs to God. The gift of the land is conditional on God's people being obedient. If the people during a time of exile turn back to God in repentance, they're going to get the land back. God holds out the promise that one day the land will be transformed as part of the new heavens and a new earth. So we have this uh, connection between how people are living among and on the land is a reflection of what eternal life may be like. Okay. Uh, Deuteronomy 3, 23 to 29, leading into our reading for Sunday. Uh, Moses has been able to view the promised land, but also receives the news it will not be him leading the tribes of Israel into it. It's going to be his lieutenant or his second in command, Joshua. Joshua is going to lead them into Canaan. Moses has done his job. He delivered God's people out of slavery under Pharaoh in Egypt. He's guided them through the promised land and the time, uh, the wilderness and the time of preparation, also filled with much trial and temptation. Now it's time for a new generation to move forward into the gift that God had promised to the people of Israel so long ago. 4, 1 to 2. Commandments are, mere, are, are, are not mere suggestions. I have a typo in my slide. Commandments are not mere suggestions. So now Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I'm teaching you to observe so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has given you. The land the Lord is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. 4 verses 5 to 7. These are omitted from the lectionary, uh, but they reiterate how God destroyed those who turned away to the pagan fertility god Baal, while those who stayed true to the Lord were spared. Following God's way will serve as a witness to others of who God is. In verse 6, blessed to be a blessing. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who when they hear all these statutes will say, surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. I, uh, I have a little picture of human billboards. The people of Israel are called to be a blessing to the world as they live out their covenant relationship with God following the guidance, the direction of the Ten Commandments. Seven to eight. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? This is a distinctive of the Jewish faith, a distinctive of the monotheism that they're bringing into the promised land. And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I'm setting before you today? The Ten Commandments are a simple summary of how do we live in relationship with God, our family, and our neighbors, and how the Israelites live out that relationship with God, family, and neighbors is going to be distinctive from the other religious practices of other uh, deities and people groups around them. And it's ideally going to be an attraction because it's not about stealing from your neighbor or killing your neighbor or taking your neighbor's family away from them. It's about caring for each other and reflecting the care that God has for you and providing everything by the way you provide for your neighbor. A word of caution here. Uh, we hear this, don't add or take away from this. And, um, and, and the emphasis on keeping this constant before you. Uh, across our country, uh, this is currently a very hot button issue about putting the Ten Commandments back in schools and within public buildings. And many of us who might be watching this or, or in Bible study with this, uh, remember those days when you had school prayer and you had Ten Commandments posted in your classroom. Our text teaches it is believers who are to be bearers through their lives who the God they believe in. 
It is not the government's responsibility to impose these commandments on others. We are to live them out. And as we live them out, it attracts others to want to learn and follow the same thing. But when you have legislative mandates saying, this is what you are to obey, this is what you are to do about God, that's going to be problematic as we read in the Old Testament and as we live out our faith in this 21st century. Uh, we have a clear uh, distinction in our Constitution as Americans that the, the country, uh, our country is not, the government is not to form a religion or to endorse a particular religion. And so when you have these legislations, like I, I have this little cartoon out of Louisiana, thou shall not mix church and state. We want all the freedom that this country gives us so that we in turn can live out our faith freely in such a manner. It attracts people to know the God that we worship and confess faith in. Verse 9, but take care and watch yourselves closely so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life and make them known to your children and your children's children. Some of you have been in Jewish homes and as you enter into their home, there's going to be a masusa there on the doorway and they'll, they'll touch it, they'll touch it. And a masusa is simply a piece of parchment inscribed with a specific Hebrew, with specific Hebrew verses from the Torah which Jews fix to the doorposts of their homes to be a reminder as you enter and as you leave, you're carrying the word of God. You're carrying the, the identity of who you are as God's people to be a blessing to the world. Reflect on this little story. You can read more of chapter 4 and, and get a sense of what's going on. But all this is given to a particular people as they prepare to enter into the promised land to not just receive their inheritance, but to use that inheritance as a blessing and as a means to attract and draw others to confess faith in the one true God who created all things and seeks to have a relationship with us that lasts forever. Take care. God bless.